tell us your name and a little bit of your background, and then why is trailering such an important issue for you? Good day, my name is Sharon Kriegier. I have a PhD in horse transport. I got interested in the subject when a wedding anniversary gift on our second wedding anniversary was this beautiful horse that uh, could not be easily transported. And of course, at that time, it was always the dumb horse's fault. Two vets had tried to transport him and said it could only be done under anesthetics. So I was overseas working with um, a, a history project and it was late at night when we came out of the library and I saw this um, British horse magazine and I picked it up and there was um, an article on balanced transport for horses. And as soon as I saw the picture, the penny dropped with a clang. This is what horses needed. The horse in the illustration was facing away from the direction of travel. It was between the maximum amount of its weight was between the axles and it had its head free to raise and lower as it transported. And then later I saw a film of a horse being transported this way on an open, small flatbed trailer, uh, blindfolded so that nobody could accuse the horse of being able to look behind itself and adjust its posture for the curves. And the trailer was towed at about 50 miles an hour around curves and it was brought to a halt. I think it was, um, you had to, you had to um, bring the trailer to a halt within 20 feet at 18 miles an hour. No, uh, sorry, 30 feet at 18 miles an hour without the cargo or the horse losing its balance or causing the trailer to go off balance. And this really intrigued me. I got in touch with the manufacturer and the horseman from New Zealand, David Holmes, who had come up with the concept because he wanted his two young daughters um, entering their teen years would be transporting their horses to shows. And he wanted a safer way to do this with their horses. And he developed a trailer whereby they could load the horses themselves and drive without fear of being overturned or anything. What had happened to David was he was transporting one of his racehorses to the track one day and the horse went Bismarck in the trailer and took the trailer off the road towards an embankment leading down to a river. And it was only a load of gravel that stopped the rig from going over. And this scared David who was an automotive engineer into rethinking some concepts. But anyway, I got a hold of the trailer and behold and lo, my horse would transport in it. No anesthetics, he was quite comfortable in it. He could um, be transported with his head low, resting a hip. He was quite happy with the whole arrangement. Um, I picked this up for my PhD thesis with Walden University. And at the time in 1980-81, there was absolutely no research on this, no interest whatsoever. Ever. Everybody knew it was the dumb horse's fault. And I went to the, at that time, one of the best libraries to work at was at Guelph University. So I went to the vet library there and I'm working through the veterinary index and I get so excited because here's somebody who's at last, they're interested in how horses can be transported better. And I was so excited and I started to write it down and I found out it was my own article. So I had thought that I had found some, uh, um, an ally. But Don Horney was at the University of Guelph at the time and we were corresponding and he said he had noticed with the horses that came into the clinic that they had back problems, particularly around the sacroiliac joint. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Why would that be? And then I found out that back in 1831-34, a Frenchman, Francois Boucher, Boucher and General Morris had taken 
the measurements of what happens to a horse's back as its head is raised and the weight is transferred toward the sacroiliac. And he, he found out that considerable amount of weight is transferred to the sacroiliac joint at this point. And it was Dr. Horney that was that um, clued me to this because when horses in front face transport travel, they have to travel head high. Hence you get manufacturers saying, oh, we've got extra weight, um, extra height in our trailers, it's, it'll be all right. But what's happening is the horse is squatting on his hind legs and the weight is being transferred toward his hindquarters and we get sore horses. And then there was a, um, a Yosemite Park warden who noticed that his cantle packs were making his horses sore. And he found out that if he carried a cantle pack more than 2% of the horse's weight, his horses would get sore or lame. So the back is really heavily involved in horse transport. Well, how can we relieve the back? Well, we can re do that by returning the horse's weight to where he normally carries it off his forequarters, which he can't do in front face transport because he's trying to resist being catapulted forward with the braking motions and the turning motions of the trailer. So that's part of the problem and it's also a large part of the solution is to work with the horse's weight placement and to allow it freedom of movement to raise and lower its head, its balance arm and its head to balance, maintain its balance. Now there was Jim Green in the UK and Sarah Weston had a complaint. Sarah was Pirelli trained, but even so she had noticed that horses were still having problems rear face in the conveyances that were being developed in Europe. Because all the Europeans said is, oh, all we have to do is turn the horse around and everything will be all right. No good people, you have to look at the whole horse. So Sarah and Jim had sent me pictures of what they had to work with and the problems that the horses were still having. And Jim was saying, it's no better than front face transport. So I said, guys, look at how the bays and the horses are set up. They're set up for failure. The length of the bay is too short. You've got a breast bar or a door up to the horse's um, trachea. You've got no way for the horse to put his head down. And even if it you did, there's no space in front of him to do so. He still can't balance. So this is part of the problem with the salami science approach too to the um, problems of horse transport. They only take one little aspect of it, publish a paper, take another tiny little aspect, publish a paper. But other than my paper in the 1982, November, December issue of Journal of Equine Veterinary Science, nobody has looked at the whole picture, the holistic picture, the integrity of the horse as matched with the integrity of automotive dynamics. And I have to thank David Holmes for this and Wentworth Tellington Jones and Linda Tellington Jones, who almost simultaneously with David Holmes had come to the same conclusion about um, transporting horses rear face. The Tellington Joneses said they could take their horses 500 miles, arrive at a competition, endurance riding usually, unload them, and the horses were fresh and ready to work. So that's the um, story so far. My, co my concerns about people trying it, as I've already outlined, they haven't looked at the whole picture. I would like to recommend Robert Peppers. He's an Australian automotive journal journalist. I'd like to recommend his videos on how weight placement in trailers affects your automotive safety and the safety of the cargo being carried. He hasn't done live weight yet, 
which is which has differences from dead weight. But he's, his, his uh, videos are fantastic on this and it should make you think about what is happening as your horse shifts its position in um, standard trailers. As for what steps we need to take now, um, the research is out there. The, um, the problem is the manufacturers are only going to give the buyer what the buyer wants. The manufacturers are not in a position to educate people and their clients do not wish to be educated. So um, we've had a few brave manufacturers try to introduce the horse public to safer transport. And you get a few people picking it up, but not enough to um, really turn the tide. The only thing in my mind that's going to turn the tide is if some big name in the FEI um, brings his three-day event horses to an international event, um, has them unloaded immediately, and they all win. This is what happened with in 1836 with one of the first horses to be vanned. There was an earlier one in 1816, but 1836 is the one where they usually fix, fixate on. And Ellis, after being transported just over 200 miles, won the race. The Oaks, I've forgotten what the, name, the full name of the, of the race was, but he won. And at that point, a named horse won a big race and everybody became interested in vanning their horses. So the, until a big name gets involved, um, it's not going to happen. As far as horse owners transporting their own horses now, if they're interested in the concept, do not do this in a standard trailer. You need to change the axles, probably the length of the bay. And you also need to change the way in which the horse is tethered in the trailer. Um, in the original one, the horse is tethered with the, with the anchor point opposite or just behind its withers and at, a, at just about the same height as the withers. And this gives the horse freedom of movement to raise and lower its head. What we see in the standard European so-called rear face transport is the horse is tied tight here or he's tied tight or up here. Well, that only encourages the horse to go forward over any barrier in front of him. It's happened again and again. Whereas when he's tied back here and he goes to try to raise his head to get over the barrier, he's only working against his own strength and his head is brought back down into position. The other thing about transporting the horses balanced is the male horse gets to stretch and stale normally while the trailer is moving. No problem. For the most part, you won't see any scramble marks in a rear face balanced trailer, and you'll find it very clean back there. You'll find that the horses aren't defecating loose dung out of fear and nervousness. Um, most of them just drop their heads and go to sleep. I have a photograph of a pony who had just been loaded. His mate is being loaded in a rear face trailer and the first pony is already asleep. There's, there's just no worry on their part because they are secure behind. They learn that there are no bears behind it. Uh, there, nobody ever has to be behind the horse loading or unloading. Somebody is always at its head never behind the horse. 